Spartans fans have finally made their way from the northeast of England to North Wales. Some of them had a difficult journey. One of the supporters' buses broke down somewhere in Cumbria near Lancaster Services. But as we've heard, Wrexham officials came to their aid and got them here by whatever method they could. It's going to be Blythe to get the action started. Will the team from the lower reaches of National League North be able to get off to the same good start that they did on Saturday? They played with pace, they played with belief, and they belied their lowly status compared to Wrexham. Yeah, I think that's that's the big test challenge for Blythe. Can they hit the heights in the way that they did on Saturday? They really did set some high standards. Paul Mullen is into the game and he's won Wrexham a corner. You would expect a quick start from Wrexham to set the tone, to put the opposition under pressure, to get them on the back foot. One of the reasons Phil Parkinson left him out on Saturday was to protect a slightly tight hamstring. Injury is happening all over the English leagues at all levels. With the tack schedule, I'm sure many of you are aware, that football has been crammed in somewhat as regards to its regular schedule to factor in the World Cup in Qatar, which starts in just over a month's time. Launched up towards Palmer. Stands almost all of two metres tall, six feet five inches. And they have been good at set pieces, Wrexham, this season. Palmer will play a major part, you'd imagine. Wasn't too happy, Phil Parkinson on Saturday. It wasn't what he wanted to see. It's going to be a free kick for Blythe Spartans. The big centre back who was really impressive at the weekend. Yeah, he stepped into midfield really well, didn't he? Confident with the ball on his feet. He's going to leave that one for his goalkeeper, Alex Mitchell, who made two or three useful saves as well. Both have experience playing in the uh, Scottish leagues. Supporters. Richardson will take it. The throw in four blind spots. Yeah, Michael Richardson had a really good game on Saturday, linked up with JJ O'Donnell. Several occasions. It's Palmer battling for the ball. Wouldn't break for Mullin. It's going to be down the line towards Palmer. Elston keeps it away from Mullin. Mullin and Palmer between them. Much different proposition for Elston and Lees to deal with at the back of Blythe. Or they should be. Yeah, I think there's a feeling within the Wrexham camp that they don't produce as much as they should away from home. Much better side here. Front to their own fans, scored loads of goals, of course. Is magnificent. They've won all six games played on this pitch this season. They've scored 25 goals in the last five, seven in the last alone, six in the one before that. It's Luke Young spreading it out to Ford. Ford has the chance to get the crossover. He was stopped in his endeavours by Evans. Yeah, they just look a, a much different team, Wrexham. 
compared to Saturday. Much more positive, confident, playing with intent. Young with the corner. Well, it was half an opening, but it was headed back the way it came. Not an easy job marking him when the ball is an accurate one, as that was. Just going to try and get a bit of physical contact, put him off, knock him off balance if you can. The referee's just testing the pressure of the ball. Molly Palmer had a word about it, saying, I'm not sure there's, uh, there's enough air in that. Let's get another one out. The referee, incidentally, is Rob Massiellis. Regular watchers of the English Premier League will know that surname. His wife, Sean, is a, a senior official at the top level in England and indeed on the European competition stage. In this great competition, the FA Cup, signs from lower levels of the game raise their games and play above themselves. Live are doing it again. It's another searching run, and what a good shot it is. JJ O'Donnell showed his class at the weekend, and he's into the groove again. Yeah, some lovely play from O'Donnell on that left hand, on that right hand side. He's certainly got talent, and he's not on his own. They can manufacture the ball quickly as O'Donnell shows there just a reminder for all that don't know that Blythe is a part-time team all of these Blythe players have other full-time professions Graham Fenton was a full-time professional in the Premier League with Leicester City Blackburn Rovers Aston Villa he's back in his native northeast Taking to the job at Blythe Sparks, trying to take them higher than they've ever been. The level they're at now, National League North, is the highest status they've ever achieved. They just hope that his, his forwards can get involved. We saw what O'Donnell did just then. Corey McEwen, Matty Cornish, they can all play with the ball at the feet. And make runs off that ball. So they're forming a, a new understanding. It's only previous appearance. Paul Rexham was at Yeovil in August, having made the move from Crawley. He was Bill Parkinson's first signing of the summer months. Part of the Crawley team that knocked Leeds United out of the FA Cup just a couple of years ago. That is the beauty of this competition, as Alan Smith knows only too well. He was in the Arsenal team in 1992 that lost on this very field. I thought you were going to mention 93 when we lifted the cup there, Guy. But yeah, you went all the way the following year, I remember that. He's Mullen going all the way, and it's flicked in, and what a lovely finish that is! That's class from Ollie Palmer. The big two are at it again. Wrexham scoring at home again. The two that we highlighted at the start, the two danger men, have linked up beautifully. And big Oli Palmer, all six foot five of him, you think he's going to be a handful in the air, but really deft footwork this from the big centre forward. He's just driven it across Mullin. Palmer does the rest. Exactly what Phil Parkinson was after in introducing this pair. Touch. Only Palmer has scored nine goals in his last 11 appearances. All kinds of goals. That one was a beauty. 
Wrexham one. Blythe Spartans nil. And Phil Parkinson's team already look better equipped to deal with what Blythe have got for them tonight than they did at any stage on Saturday. qualifying rounds and then the first round of the competition proper is when the football league clubs join in the third round is when your big boys arrive Premier League Championship uh, Blythe just got to find a way of staying in this contest certainly can't afford to con concede another but uh, just got to steady the ship at the moment having possession of the ball like this won't hurt them but it's in the final third where they need their clever players in possession Sunday, the MLS Cup playoffs continue in the conference semi-finals. It starts in the Eastern Conference. CF Montreal hosting defending champions New York City FC, 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. And in the Western Conference, it's Austin hosting FC Dallas, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. And both matches also streamed live on the ESPN app. off the tackle hasn't fully stopped him it's the former Wrexham player Devonix who tried and he's done so at the cost of a corner I 
Jones. Into Young. Yeah, it's got the makings of being a long night for Blythe Spartans, hasn't it? You can see Wrexham got the bit between the teeth here. Davis has misjudged that one, but there's plenty of time for Clueth to find goalkeeper Howard. Elston. Go despite what the Wrexham fans thought was a foul. Big talking point in the English game right now at all levels is the high bar that referees are setting. They don't want to blow for fouls unless they're absolutely certain. And we saw that to great demonstration in the Liverpool Manchester City game on Sunday. Those who watched that, that just flowed, nothing given. Here's Ford. Jones. Come on, speaking to the former Manchester United in England, Paul back Gary Neville, who's the co-owner of Salford City, a level up from Wrexham at the weekend, and asking him about Paul Mullen. I've seen him play many times. And he said to me, Alan, and this is something you'll know all too well as a striker, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't move around, he doesn't run, but you know what? He scores every match. Yeah, he's got the look of a poacher. Having said that, it was a lovely assist for his partner, Molly Palmer. But I'm sure he gets a lot more pleasure out of hitting the back of the net. There's another striker whose lack of touches in a game is highlighted all the time, a certain Erling Haaland of Manchester City and Norway. I don't think it's a bad trait to have. Scoring goals. Not to be said for. Think of it as a special teams player. There was Mullin. This is Palmer. Jones. Have to hurry to get away from Cornish. Trying to improvise the ball onto Ford. Mitchell got a little lucky at first with the clearance, but hey, really hey, hey. helped out Hickey and it's out for a throw. One, one, one. Oh, Tozer. Davis. Young. Ball's waiting wide. Here is Ford. Right across the face. Blocked by Lees. That's Cornish. It's good football that from Wrexham. Pearson ball through to James Jones in the middle of the park, who was able to turn. They weren't able to do that too much on Saturday. Feed the ball through the lines. chance Ford's trying to create and there we are, there we are. Lee's actually there we are. got his head to it but he was already lying down he was a brave header that wasn't it <laughs> there were boots flying around he went to possession managed to keep it now the Jones with the switch Arriving, that's a really good tackle. Yeah, it was a good tackle. Having to do so much more defending here tonight. 
Had to be clean that one, otherwise a penalty would have been given. You can see Toby Lee just taking big gulps of air yeah. after that. Yeah. Trying to get the second win, these blind players. The adrenaline was with them all the way through the game on Saturday. Not to be feeling the pace of it here. Another one flicked towards goal, but wide this time from Palmer. They just can't get a handle on Ollie Palmer. Well, you can see why they are, have been good at set pieces this season with the likes of Palmer to aim at. They are a bigger side than Blythe tonight. They've got that height advantage. Parkinson looks a lot more relaxed tonight than he did towards the latter stages of the game on Saturday. There seem to be blood vessels topping a plenty. He was not happy with his team's performance, however calm he seemed after the match. Here's Evans. It's Elston. A spell on the ball, they really need to get JJ O'Donnell on it coming from the right as much as they can. He's in the middle at the moment, waiting for it, demanding it. It's not coming his way. In fact, he's been cut out, misplaced by Hickey. Oh, back. It was Hickey who came in to win the ball. That was an awkward moment for Howard. He had a little flick at it, didn't touch it. Goal kick. Yeah, it wasn't the best ball into McAlinden. And uh, they nicked the ball off him. A couple in the middle waiting. But those balls have got to be accurate, as I said. There's a height advantage for Wrexham all over the pitch, really. Cleared by Mark Howard, who got all the way to the FA Cup semi-finals whilst he was a Sheffield United player. Eight years ago, 2014, they lost to Hull City in the last four. Hull then beat by Arsenal in the final. Arsenal, the team that's won this competition more than any other. in the same net later on in the game. Yeah. About that sort of position where O'Donnell is now that Mickey Thomas hit his free kick from. Those of you who want to read up on your, your English and indeed Welsh FA Cup history, that game, Wrexham Arsenal from 1992, is that famous. It has its own Wikipedia page. All of the details are on there. Oh, remind me not to read that. This, Alan, I believe your first visit to the race yes, ground since. It is, and it, it's changed a fair bit. The stand that we're in now wasn't here. It was a little more dilapidated back then. Oh, there was David Seaman for that pretty good. <laughs> I promise we wouldn't bring it up much. There's Elsden, out of play for a Wrexham throw. are in a hurry to take the throw. The body language is different to Saturday. Everything just looks a little keener, meaner and hungrier from Wrexham. Yeah. That's typified by the challenge of Mullin to win the ball. Here's Ford now, trying to get himself in range. He has support. That's a waste. Yeah, there's red shirts flying all over the place. He's got to be pleased with the, with the start to this match. Just what? He would have wanted, demanded. They've just been a bit too much for Blythe. And any manager loves it when the two strikers combine and then they're both on the score sheet. 
perfect. Happy Red Dragons. Over the top for Mullen. Mitchell back pedals. Mullen plays it in and Ford tries to pass it in. Straight at Alex Mitchell. It's a matter of time before this becomes three and four, though. Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Mullin making yet another run down that right-hand channel. It's a really good pick out and he deserves better. Excellent pass from the striker. Doesn't get the power, doesn't get the direction, Anthony Ford. It's toes up. Clueth. Davis unable to keep it in. It's Blythe's ball. Towards Cornish. Here's Evans. Cornish here hasn't yes, yes. hardly seen the ball. It's nicely played it. Won't be kept any longer. There's a shooting chance now though, and it's high. Ravenhill just chanting his arm. That had to be perfect, but well he's 20 yards out. He's got time to set himself. Disappointing one that. Liga continues on Thursday at 2.55 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Barcelona coming off a defeat to Real Madrid in this past Sunday's El Clasico. Barca host Villarreal from Camp Nou. It's Richardson, scorer of the Blythe equaliser on Saturday with a free kick that was intended to find somebody else. For them to score, but it went all the way in. A little bit wind assisted, and Mark Howard unsighted in the Wrexham goal. It's O'Donnell, who is the shining light in this Blythe team. And he's got his team a corner. Come on! That's progress for them. Get bodies in that box, make sure the delivery is a good one. Don't waste this opportunity. Take the corner, he's also going to have to retrieve the ball by himself. This was a familiar tactic on Saturday. All of the Blythe players bundled together before they broke. And, uh, Rob Maciel didn't like the look of it. He's going to call for the corner to be taken again. He should have watched on Saturday, he'd have expected this. Take any nonsense. He's uh, formerly of the Royal Army Medical Corps. He's now a reservist, the referee. Ten years, a full-time soldier. They have eyes everywhere. When it comes up, it goes. Goal. What a good shot, and well watched by Mark Howard. Whoa, that did... was swerving all over the shot, wasn't it? Just Howard did ever so well just to keep hold of that. They need something to lift the blind spots, and maybe that'll be it. Something to give him a bit of belief.
two for Maka Linden. Yeah, the assistant right on top of it, maybe advising the ref. But it was an easy one, that. Maka Linden's cottoned on to the fact that O'Donnell's the danger. Well, what do I mean for? He did. And he shouldn't have. They've got to be on top of him there in the box. And now he's off at the other end. Just left it behind, though, and he's been bundled over, has he? No, the referee thinks he just fell. Evans. And Palmer stayed down. Yeah, I think Ravenshill did get some of the ball. Maybe caught the player, too. Joe Parkinson. To work with the fourth official, Zadir Mustafa, about that. Palmer's yeah. away, Ricky, uh, rather, uh, Liam Ravenhill is after him. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a foul. He, he just kind of followed through on his run, Ravens Hill, but the, the interception was a fair one. He's calling the 19 year old Ricky, that's his dad, who also used to play for Doncaster Rovers. That just shows my Shut age. Shut your toss, can I say? <laughs> No doubt he's been caught, the big man, and in a bit of discomfort here. He put the brakes on. I think, actually, he might have caused the injury himself in stopping so abruptly. Right ankle. And that's what's being flexed now. He was uh, rested from the start of the weekend because of a, a slight toe injury. Site with Halloween coming up. Life fans in good voice despite their team being two goals down. We can't see John the Toaster yet. Maybe something's popped up. Those of you who are with us on Saturday will have seen the rather bizarre sight of a Blythe supporter with a toaster strapped to his head and plenty following Wrexham. Have delved into that for a bit more info. Apparently it is a regular site. He goes to a local pub before every game, plugs himself in, makes toast for his fellow supporters. What's unusual about that? I just, just don't get it. <laughs> I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't had much to cheer so far, but there's just been one or two instances that have given them a bit of hope. I mean, this was the best, I think. The shot from Michael Richardson. He did catch it, but I mean, he's such a... A long way out, so often they just sail up and over the bar, but he's controlled it really well. What I really like about that being old-fashioned is that Mark Howard caught it. Instead of punching it. The way of so many goalkeepers at the top level now, and understandably, and if you're under pressure, is to get the two hands behind it and punch it away. You can catch it, why not? <laughs> the goalkeeper coaches all over the world now telling me why the touch is the better method. Evans is on the march down the left, but there is nowhere to fall. Clive coming again. Best spell of the game. 
question. Palmer okay after this ankle injury, that's what it looked like. As a striker, not the kind of game you want to uh, come off from because he and Mollin will be feeling there are more goals about here. Flag up for offside against McEwen, who's not been able to get into it at all. When he did have the ball at his feet at the weekend, he was... Well, he looked dynamite. He was out of it a bit tonight. No Cedric Main to hold the ball up and bring him in. That's been lost by Richardson, and Davis is in! And Davis has made it three! And Wrexham are on their way. No mistakes tonight. No messing about. They're getting the job done. Yeah, I think this is the goal. The fatal blow, really, for Floyd Spartans. The knockout punch, perhaps, by Wrexham. A little unlucky. He flicks it on and it comes off the, off the boot of Richardson, who can't react in time, but after that... Doesn't Davies tuck it, tuck it away with a plop? Really cool finish that. Goal for Rexham in the 36th minute. They have been Jordan clinically in front of goal tonight, Rexham. Through the legs of Lees. No chance for Mitchell in the Blythe goal. And no chance for Blythe in general, you would think now. Rexham three. Blythe Spartans nil. Now looks a case of how many. And for Graham Fenton, it's a case of can they stay in it, keep it respectable? And they'll be thinking about Alfred and Town in the National League North at the weekend. Looks as though they're fairy tale. Going to have its final chapter written tonight. Not quite the fairy tale of 78. They got a draw here and took Wrexham back to the northeast for a replay. Which was in such demand that over 40,000 watched it at St James's Park home in Newcastle United. What Blythe did really well on Saturday was invite the players from that day back to their Croft Park home to come and watch this uh, current day meeting with Wrexham. But it looks as though all of their energies went on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, Wrexham, after all, are the form team in a division higher. Blythe are struggling in their league. Deserted, empty, decommissioned, but moves are afoot to bring it back to its former glory. We were told pre-match there is going to be a, a meeting when planning permission will be granted early next month, and then they can start work properly on it. What a stadium this will be. The demand is there, people want to come on watch Wrexham. We'll be able to get behind that goal again, just like they used to. difference to players attacking an end where all your followers are making a noise trying to suck the ball into the net your eyes about the something at 
atmospheric about it at the moment, though. You can feel the history emanating from that empty stand. Dharma shirt was being held as he waited for that. Never came to him. Might be the only way to stop him. Mitchell's in a hurry, trying to find O'Donnell up there. Toza with a, a scream of anguish in his miscontrol, costing himself a throw. Jones. Jones trying to keep going. To apply for what we've got to do now, just try to keep going. Show some blind spirit. Elston. Nobody really taking charge with an early shout. As we said, this is the first time they started a game together at the back for Wrexham. The problem was the collision, the impact on the shoulder of Bentoza. Important shoulders, those with his long throws. Don't That's not a good that. one. Bentoza gets treated. A reminder for you not to miss the FX series Welcome to Wrexham, the all access documentary that follows the club and owners Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. All episodes now streaming on Hulu. A grimace from Toza in the background, Tony Cliffs. Trying not to look at him. <laughs> Giving his teammate a dirty look there. But uh, those Wrexham defenders, they haven't really been put under too much pressure. Most of it has been in front of them, the ball. They haven't uh, been breached, really. You can't say that by they've got behind down the sides to the, to the byline very often at all. day before and late on in the day before the game on Saturday. Davidix, nicely done. Up towards McEwen. Don wants it pulled back to him. Now he's gone around the outside of McEwen. He's uh, confident enough on the back here. Breaking Wrexham. Palmer did just win the race of the ball in front of Lees. Two up front, it's working so much better as we thought it would for Wrexham tonight. Sam Dolby was on his own on Saturday. Lees and Elston were made to look good. Yeah. No, I mean, the service was really poor to him, in fairness to Dolby. And he 
was uh, he's an observer for most of the match before coming off. Here's Lees. We are into at least four minutes of additional time. You don't often get four at the end of a half, but the injury to Palmer was a factor. Quite a lengthy stoppage for that. Another goal or two yet. Yeah, it's gone as well as Wrexham could possibly have wanted, I think. The referee's eventually given the free kick to Wrexham because uh, Elster was lying on the ball, then he used his hand. He was certainly not going to get off and make it easy for Palmer. And he's going to give a yellow card to Matty Elston as well. Yeah, he, he slipped initially and when he's on the deck he knows he's in a bit of bother here and he's thinking well the ball's not going past even if Palmer is that's the third Blythe player to have slipped tonight fallen flat swung in Mitchell comes for it that's a good catch a good bit of distribution too for O'Donnell We were both taken with JJ O'Donnell on Saturday and again tonight. Blythe stand out. He spreads it. There is Hickey. so far as he tried to enter the penalty area his way was barred yeah really good first half from Wrexham they've done everything I think they set out to do they've been compact well organized potent in attack in a commanding position Ravenhill by O'Donnell now towards Cornish Cornish skips away from two Richardson good work initially but excellent cover two from Davis got in his way and made sure the ball went behind Saturday. Tonight has been a good day's work so far. You know how these managers work though, and looking at Graham Fenton, there's the other side of the coin. It won't be enough for Phil Parkinson yet. No, no, it won't. But uh, it's a comfortable position, and 10 15 minutes into the second half, you can think about resting a few key players ahead of uh, the weekend. and wondering what to do next such are the uh, the lack of resources for Blythe they have a few injuries as well but uh, they only have four substitutes available tonight three outfield players and a goalkeeper two of the outfield players very young Matty Dobson and Rio Joyce the juniors at any other club running through it's a free kick for Blythe just outside the box nice football gets its reward yeah little chats here just before half time to lift the away team in it's the like main it's going to be a yellow card for Davis yeah I mean in the main Wrexham have kept Blythe out of their penalty area there's some good football just on the edge here. Yeah, he's just pulling him back. Tug on the arm. It 
So a chance for Blythe to try and give themselves a little bit of hope again with what will be surely the last kick of the half. Devedix is their free kick king, but we've seen how well Richardson strikes the ball too. This is going to be Michael Richardson. Went for power, kept it low. And again, it is very watchful and very cool and calm and experienced from Mark Howard. He just gathers the ball, claps the Wrexham supporters, and off they go at half-time at the racecourse ground with a comfortable lead on their way into the first round proper of the FA Cup. Thanks to goals from Ollie Farmer, from Paul Mullin, and from Jordan Davis. Wrexham in command. All of the half-time analysis to come, then the second half live with the half-time score. Wrexham 3, live Spartans nil. The second half going, I'm sure the words of boss Phil Parkinson will be, carry on as you are, score as many goals as you can, and this is a team that does enjoy scoring goals at the racecourse ground. Six played, 6-1 six at home this season, scoring 27 along the way. So make it 30, with another half to go tonight. Yeah, it was always going to be a, a big ask to uh, stop that trend. And his team have delivered yet again. So Richardson with the fly of throw. does well to draw the foul. There's a little bit of a drip going on there. And then mopping up. Yeah, maybe arms flailing and catch one in the face. Yeah. You make though, guy, about some of the lads, you know, would have been at work. And uh, the fitness levels were really good on Saturday, and I think the adrenaline saw them through. But when you're 3 0 down, all of a sudden, maybe you begin to feel a little tired. Looks as though Graham Fenton is going to make a change or certainly get one ready. and is going to come on for Blythe. Sevens missed the game on Saturday because of an injury he picked up against Banbury in the previous National League North game. Dobson only 18. If he does get on, this will be his Blythe Spartans' first team debut. disappointed to have been told to put the outer layer back on he was ready he was yeah he, he did have the look of a man who couldn't wait to get on that pitch I mean it's not under the easy circumstances but debut is a debut
Josh Scott, he's not in action for Blyde at the moment. Before we restart with Blyde temporarily down to 10, it's going to be a Wrexham free kick. Played in. Mullin had a swing, didn't make proper contact, and Thomas Eckert is blocked. Jones. Going to shoot. It's young. Mitchell will prevent the corner. There's Tony Cliff, there's Davis. Another collision between two Rex and defenders. Tony Cliff involved again, this time with Hayden. Richardson makes progress for Blythe. And the referee's got to stop the play because it's a head injury. We can't carry on. Player has picked up that sort of problem, and it's uh, Jordan Tunnicliffe who needs the treatment. Well, the Wrexham lads doing the best to injure each other when you think about the toes that Tunnicliffe clash in the first half. Hayden really seemed to clatter into his man here. All eyes on the ball. Kewen was the blithe man in the middle of it all. He came out of it unscathed. It is Jordan Tunnicliffe's first start in a Wrexham shirt, so he's got to know the games and the positions that other players will take up. The standings, partnerships do take time. playing it out. Robin Hill. Robin Hill again. Richardson wants it right. O'Donnell setting off for the return, and it is touched his way, and it's deflected, and a good save by Howard. Mullin now, getting busy. Two to take it off him. Richardson. check in now and the shot is good and the goal is excellent JJ O'Donnell with a wonderful strike these Spartans still have fight in them well the previous attack you know when they weaved their way into the box and nearly scored was a warning to Wrexham but JJ O'Donnell has always perhaps looked the man most likely, and he sneaks this one in the near post. A bit like Mitchell for the, the Mullin header. Perhaps Mark Howard will be disappointed, but O'Donnell catches it really well. Gives them hope, gives them a bit of life. Wrexham three. Blythe Spartans won. And for the next five or ten minutes, that will put extra energy in the legs of those players in green and white. 
certainly got the supporters in good voice. Something to cheer for the long Tuesday trek. That's Cleworth. Run out of room, it's a blind throw. Somehow, I don't know if he gets a little shove in the back to knock him off balance, but the chance was there for him. Almost gets ahead of it, Evans. Mistimes his run, a little too eager, perhaps. Tomorrow, it is the 
second round of the DFB Pokal, the German Cup. Hanover host Borussia Dortmund at 11.55 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. And the match will also stream live on the ESPN app. Have Hanover got some blithe spirit? the best. No action taken, that's why they're excellent fans are booing, they think. Should have been a yellow card for Hickey. Well, interesting to see how Wrexham react now. Can they uh, stem the tide, stop the fight back? Played half an hour to go. Wrexham three, blind spots two. Wrexham now looking a little anxious from a position of great comfort. Well, we're sat here at half time having a cup of tea, thinking the game's practically over. And many in this stadium would have thought that. Is it? Those two goals will have made him lose focus. They'll be burnt now. Under the trumpets. Really did not see where that could have come from. tie of great interest for this one tonight, bearing in mind the draw for the first round. It is Chester 1, Oldham 1. Chester have equalised in that, Wrexham's rivals from just up the road. And uh, the winners of this tie will be at home to the winners of that one in the next round. It could be a local derby, Wrexham, Chester, but we're not there yet. Oh, this ground will be rocking for that if it happens. It really will. I've got to keep by that again, yeah. It's Tunnicliffe. Hayden. He's lost it. The players in green and white are hunting in packs now. They looked a, a spent force, they looked tired. <laughs> it's amazing what goals can do for you, how much energy it can put into your legs. Richardson it has gone out of play, it'll be a Wrexham throw. Dare I say, Graham Fenton even looked a beaten coach. Yeah, shaking his head. 
moaning to his assistant alongside, but that breathed life and belief into them. And this one, well, all of a sudden they're thinking, could we possibly get something out of this? Gladiator spirit. They put the, uh, the spears up at half-time, upon my signal, unleash hell. They do, yeah, yeah, shell-shocked. Now it's uh, the Blythe players getting to those loose balls first. Richardson. There's a little layoff around the corner from Devadix, and he uses it again to find O'Donnell. And it comes from Richardson. Kieran wasn't it? O'Donnell, O'Donnell was in the medal, he's still there now. As he's pulled out the Devadix, Richardson wide once more. Devadix in, O'Donnell with the touch on. Here's Ravenhill, and he leaves it for Cornish. We've seen in his little cameo on Saturday and tonight, Cornish likes a shot. In from Richardson, Cornish onto it again, he does shoot, and he spirals behind for a corner. <laughs> What a turnaround this has been. I mean, Graham Fenton, he's assembled a, a team of real footballers, hasn't he? Players that can manipulate the ball so cleverly. This is only his 15th game in charge. He was only appointed at the start of the season, having left South Shields in January. The club from lower down. Richardson with the corner, the referee wants to... Uh, Give a warning about the standard shoving. Cornish in Cleworth. Sounds like a folk duo. Richardson gets the return. It's Devadix. Howard will get to that. Well served, just taking his time here. That's it, calm things down a touch. He's not sweating like he was on Saturday, but the heart rate's up. It's not good for the health, there's no doubt about that. Oh, it is, Alan, gets the blood flowing. <laughs> it's OK for us, I think the managers. They suffer. He's clear with. He lost out to two. O'Donnell fumbles his way past Young. And for a blind throw, the Wrexham fans are trying to make a bit of noise here to lift their players. Let's not forget they're still in the lead, but only just now. Sunday, the MLS Cup playoffs continue with the conference semi finals starting in the Eastern. CF Montreal against defending champions New York City FC, 1 pm Eastern on ESPN. Then in the Western Conference, Austin FC host FC Dallas, 8 pm Eastern on ESPN. Both matches also streamed live on the ESPN app. Richardson. Richardson again. Hayden's header and another from Young, and there's Palmer. Palmer only Mullen in front of him. He'll time the run right. He's surrounded by green and white at the moment. What a bad pass. Evans is there to shepherd the ball out. Did he touch it? He did. Gonna be a corner. Yeah, those Wrexham players need these supporters at the moment. 
get them back on track. They need another goal to calm the nerves. Jones. Cornish able to play it forward to McEwen. They're racing forward down the middle. Well, he holds on and held on too long. And the red shirt swarmed around him. He didn't have an obvious pass on. There were a couple trying to get him support, but both had some players close to them. That's a nice ball, and here's Palmer. And he'll get there to keep it in. There's only money to aim for it, might be all he needs. Looking for Mullin, it was a touch from Mitchell that took it away. O'Donnell. Evans. Elston. I was watching him. See Rex of Life too often. You'll be wondering why on earth they're not cruising in this game. Well, they were. 3 0 at half time should have been more than enough just to add to it this second half. But this is the structure of the English League. Blythe are almost, well, they are more than a whole division below. Wrexham second in the National League. Blythe 21st in National League North, a division that's lower in the English pyramid. But so many times, things are leveled up. Tuck in the shirt. Have to stop the run. And here's Davis. Turn clear, not clear yet. Oh, that was now cool. Richardson. That was cool play. Wrexham are back now. Ford. Turned away by Lees. Here's Jones. Back on the front foot, Bill Parkinson's team, but that's a, a tame one from Jones. Bryce Hosanna is coming on for Wrexham, and Liam McElendon is going to make way for it. Side, it's like for like. Left hand side, big ball. Touched on by Jones. Here's Palmer. Look at the room on the right for Ford. They're just getting dragged back towards their own goal a bit more now. Rexham looking confident again. Ford has support. Well, it's a goal kick. Yeah, just found their feet a little bit, regained a bit of composure, Wrexham, but might they need another goal to see themselves through? It's going to be a Wrexham change now, and Rio Joyce is coming on. How old is this lad? The teenager takes to the field for blind spots. Matty Cornish makes way. Side from North Shields. And the attendance of the North East. 6,845. 6,845. Thank you so much for your fantastic support. Attendance announced is 6,845. Very healthy. 246 as the crowd count from. Blind spot and a lovely touch there from Wrexham to give special thanks for them, to them for coming down. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Would have been a, quite a few more, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Lancaster service station has never had a crowd so big. Well, they'd be pleased they came. Their teams giving it everything out there. 
those who don't know, that is standard to the English FA Cup as well. There's always stories of buses breaking down and supporters not making it. Indeed, when Alan Smith's Arsenal lost here in 1992, their bus broke down on the way home. Yeah, just to have salt into the wounds who have stood on a, a windy and wet side of the road in the middle of Northern Wales. I bet your mood was magnificent. Yeah. Free kick. Yes, it is. To blind Sparks, just outside the box. And it was the substitute, Joyce, making his mark straight away. Yeah, another clever little footballer to add to the list. Quite a few areas of the pitch. It, it's the men of Wrexham against the boys of Taylor. <laughs> he won't be winning a header. Hey, listen, it's all about timing. It's in the land of the giants there. Never Dixon Richardson. We've seen their prowess over the two games. Rio Joyce is being dragged into position by senior pro Toby Lee's behind him. That's Deva Dix. It only needed a touch. Howard was getting it all the way, but a deflection would have done for him. It was a beautiful delivery, yeah. I wasn't sure who it was that was so close to getting a little nick on it. shirt around now Jordan Hickey that time you're right though guy just the slightest nick on this and it would have maybe done for Mark Howard in goal but he kept his eyes on it O'Donnell's so close he's trying to do what he nearly did on Saturday when Richardson's free kick went straight in O'Donnell briefly tried to claim that he got a little touch on that he didn't good goal tonight though the FX series welcome to Wrexham the all-access documentary following the club and their owners Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney and all episodes now streaming on Hulu watching that will give you an even greater feel to this place and a bit of an attachment maybe too I know plenty across the United States already have one It's never dull. It's never straightforward either. It's a whole lot of fun along the way. All of a sudden, Graham Fenton's on his feet, sniffing a possibility. Talking of sniffing, three seconds has got under the nose plugs now. The flow has been stemmed. It's O'Donnell.
Jones. An untimely slip. The players have lost their footing tonight. Yeah, a bit greasy out there. Joyce. Follow Lillipin. Inexperience. Referee's going to have a word. He'd lost control and he was just so keen to make amends that he didn't stop himself going into the next tackle when he really ought to have done. Yeah, over and the ball. In situations like that, you really only have eyes for the ball. The teammate book for descent as well. And Jordan Hickey's got a yellow card too. to defend his teammate. Wrexham Church, Jordan Davis sees his number up on the ball. Score of the goal that made it 3-0. And really should have met everybody. With Wrexham at heart sitting back, arms folded, nice and relaxed for the rest of the night. And on comes Tom O'Connor. deflected free kick and Wrexham just two minutes away from going through on Saturday for Richardson's late level up and live and here's Joyce again seen off by Hay Mullet yeah, the assistant wasn't given anything on that side so the ref is much to Wrexham's disgust Still got a good 10 minutes left in this match. Still time for plenty of drama. Now we're clear. Palmer trying to stay on side. Didn't manage it. Free kick for blind spots. Got to give uh, great credit to that Blythe defence that have tightened up, made it much more difficult for the likes of Palmer and Mullin to find a way through in the way they were in the first half. We talk about how welcome to Wrexham is winning. Wrexham, a whole army of new fans. I think Blythe in Wrexham have won a whole load of new friends over the last couple of games. Might not be the case if they get an equaliser. Popular at all then. Out. But Palmer to win it. He's had a good hold of it. trying to engineer it, but there might have been an element of being held as well. There's Young, and that slip from Kluwer, who recovered in time. Refs stopped the game because there's another blow to the head here. Yeah, he was on the deck, and the ball was just rolling by his head. It's JJ O'Donnell's hurt. Mm. It's an accident, but this is uh, Mullin. I normally have sympathy with the centre forward here, but he's just trying to back into Elston, and I think maybe he slipped a touch as well. He'd do well to get a penalty there. Didn't look too 
too much in it on review. Not that we have actual reviews at this level of the FA Cup. No VAR here. Well, he was uh, the man that gave his side hope with this shot into the corner. Howard not happy that they didn't prevent that shot coming in, but it was a good one. Clever, isn't it? You expect it from that angle to go into the other corner. And he pulled it back brilliantly. Oh, he's a clever player. The last player Graham Fenton would want to lose to injury. Every inch, the coach with a stopwatch around the neck. Leeds. That was OK. as well for their fitness levels these blind players part-timers have kept going here to try and find out later I, I would imagine a number of them will be at work in the morning part-time team plenty of these players have other full-time jobs here's mullet the flag has stayed down onside Palmer won't get there it's cleared away is the reply break no choice is stopped by young To Richardson, just evaded Mullen. Ravenhill. And a double deflection in water, it's going to be a rest goal kick. Well, can Blythe create another chance? Before the game is up. There's not a lot more he can do now. Tarkinson will be chewing inside at what he's seen in this second half. Or more accurately, at what he hasn't seen in this second half. equalised on Saturday. Breaks up could not afford to let that happen again and risk going into 30 minutes of extra time. The two minutes plus what? Three or four away from sealing their place in the first round proper of the FA Cup. Still a bit of life left in this Blythe team. They're not giving up. The ball is about to go up, and 
when it does, you will hear a moan and a groan from anxious Wrexham fans. They don't want any time added on. They want this game over, done and won. But you wait for it. We won't spoil the drama. We've been told how many minutes they're going to be added on. Hayden has rolled off him and out for a blind throw. Devedix. Joyce had the shot. It's ricocheted out to Tarnit. Tarnit to Mullen. Here we go. At least seven minutes added on to the end of the game. Mullen finds Tarnit. Tarnit can't get past Elsden. What a tackle. And another another one solid game. Elsden's out. Here's Ford. Just a reminder, at least seven more minutes to play. It's a lift for Blythe fans. I don't think a few of them saw that ball. There's Cluas. Here we go. Seven minutes of the time. Yeah, plenty of cheers from the away end. Ball, they win the game, it sounds simple. Hosanna. O'Connor. Here's O'Donnell. The man who can make things happen most for Blythe Spartans. Ravenhill. Now Evans. What point does Graham Fenton say? Right, every one of you, charge. <laughs> your tactics <laughs> last minute of an FA Cup tie tactics yeah <laughs> longest five minutes of I was going to say Phil Parkinson's life he's seen it all before actually <laughs> Elston gets that. Oh, Elston must be on his last legs. He's only 24, Phil Parkinson, you know. <laughs> he's, he's not his 54, but uh, <laughs> his job's putting years on him. Hosanna. That's Hayden. Held up by Palmer, being held on to again. In towards Marlin, flicked away, Hosanna's onto it now. Bryce Hosanna to curl one! He actually didn't get the curl, it went straight wide. Yeah, Dolly Palmer, not too far away, but... Kicking the ball into the stand will be enough for Wrexham now. One of the few chances they've created in this second half, only half a chance, but... Mitchell hasn't had a whole lot to do in this second half, thanks to his team going the other way. Mitchell with the ball out. time about it with just over three minutes remaining. There's Richardson. Now Palmer. Mullen has got freedom of the half, but no way through to him for Palmer. 
Richardson has to be quick. Well one back. Good tracking. Now we are. And now he's at it. Mullin outside. Mullin puts it straight at Mitchell, who's going to get on with this very quickly. Yeah, he's only going to do one thing there, Mullin. Have a go at goal, try and curl it in the far corner. Two minutes away from the first round. And Blythe upset them late on again. They've upset them plenty this half already. From 3-0 down to 3-2. Winners of this tie play either Oldham Athletic or Chester in the next round. Chester, Wrexham's local rivals. And that game, that replay tonight, has gone to extra time. Chester 2, hold of 1. If Wrexham hold on, the prospect of a local derby, a match to save in the first round, is on. This place will be rocking for that if Wrexham can hold on. Shouldn't be like this, they should have cruised through. Well, they're not far away now, but we know Blythe will not give up. and waiting, O'Donnell's going to try and do it by himself so far. There's room here. Oh, poor ball. One of the few he's hit tonight. And Demodic's nowhere near Evans with the pass. Minute to go. Blythe throwing. Wrexham fans are trying to sing their team through to the finish here. Chester is the song, so they've heard that Chester have taken the lead and they want to play them in the next round. Here's Ravenhill, here's O'Donnell, who's going to have the shot of glory? No way through for JJ O'Donnell, not this time. Into the pack penalty area, Howard didn't get it fully, here's Richardson! And that was it, that had to go in. But where before he showed so much composure, he just snatched at it. He hurried it, he blew it, basically. A little too much time to think about it. He knew it was probably the last chance his team would have. A little mess by the keeper. But Michael Richardson didn't have another twist and a turn left in him. Wrexham go through. 3-0, they had the lead at half-time. But back came Blind Spartans once more. And it meant it was the usual thriller minute game at the race course ground Wrexham. Which in the next round, the FA Cup first round proper, could play host to a local derby if Chester can hang on to beat Oldham Athletic in their time. Another wonderful night of football to enjoy in Wrexham. Goals from Palmer, Mullen and Davis in the first half proved enough with a full-time score of Wrexham 3, Blythe Spartans 2.